Well, hey guys, I'm on my way to Costco. Um, this is actually the first time I've been in a while, so I may check out the skincare, see if they got anything new. Looks like we got some banana boats on screen. How much are these? $16.99. Banana boat ultra. It's a chemical sunscreen. It does have fragrance. The spray, they're less reliable. You need to do multiple passes and then you actually physically have to rub it in. But here you get the tube and then you get the two sprays for $16.99. And they also have Alba Botanica sprays. Water resistant, chemical sunscreen, so no cast. Now these also have fragrance in them. Coconut clear spray. I wonder if that smells like the kind of whole coconut sunscreen smell is pleasant. Ooh, and then we have the Copper Tone SPF 30 sprays. They redid their packaging. I noticed that in Target the other day. How much are those? Kind of hard to see. $14.49. These cotton rounds. They always have these Neutrogena makeup remover wipes and then the Kirkland brand version. Ooh, we have a Dove body lotion and hand cream combination here. Like ceramides. Now these do have fragrance in them. But I wonder how different the hand cream. The hand cream is just the body one and a hand cream too. They still have this Lubriderm one too, and it's fragrance free. Thirteen dollars and forty nine cents for all this lotion. This has always seemed like a decent moisturizer to me. It has panthenol in it, dimethicone. You could try this on your face too. I mean, I've talked about this before, but facial facial moisturizers tend to be a lot more lightweight and feel more comfortable, less greasy on the skin, but that doesn't mean that you can't use a body lotion or cream on the face. I frequently do. Wow, well, a CeraVe hydrating facial cleanser pack. How much is that? $18.99, not a bad price. And then they have the Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser, a biggie pack, $19.49. I'm actually using this right now. My sh I've got it as my, I use this as my second step in the double cleanse. I switched over though from that cleansing balm that I got on Amazon that had the citrus oil. I stopped using that. I couldn't handle it. It was making my eyes irritated. And I switched over to using the Cozy Softy Mo cleansing oil as my first step, and I'm using this as a second step. Variety of razor blades here. $36.99. Well, that's expensive. It seems expensive. These flamingo razors. Those were all the rage on social media, what, two years ago? One year ago? They were, I think Target was really heavily promoting them. I've heard good things about this Harry's razor, too. Pantene. I used to use that, I think in middle school sometimes. But don't hairdressers like cringe at Pantene? I remember I saw a girl do a sponsorship with Pantene on YouTube and she got a lot of unhappy comments, we'll just say. I've heard good things about this though. The Kirkland shampoo and conditioner. Doesn't surprise me, Kirkland always comes in. Speaking of Pantene, I'm tempted by this packaging, the essential botanicals. It kind of seems like they're trying to rip off herbal essence. Passion fruit and cocoa butter, sounds good. Methyl isothiazolinone, just like herbal essence. That's a preservative that people frequently become allergic to. It's in a lot of shampoos. I mean, it's a common allergen. Dove's got an anti-frizz shampoo and conditioner. $12.49 on sale, originally $16.49. That's a good price, I would say. Has anyone tried this? It too has methyl isothiazolinone in it. Head and shoulders, hair thickening. What the heck? Head and shoulders, hair thickening, step one with biotin. And it doesn't actually thicken your hair. Either taking it in a supplement or putting it on your hair. But it may just kind of deposit on there and thicken it. Now, zinc pyrithione is anti-inflammatory, so it may help with 
hearing loss, but not if you develop an allergy. Mm, what's this spray? Oh, is this a Levon zinc pyrithium? Hmm. Cool. 1949. We've got head and shoulders two in one scalp care. 1399. This is a shampoo and conditioner all in one. People like to rag on these, but honestly, if you have short hair, I totally get why you would I would use this if I had like really short hair because if you have really short hair conditioner becomes less important because conditioner just helps with manageability shine but if you have really really short hair that becomes less of an issue and therefore I think you can get away with these two-in-one shampoo conditioners when you have really really short hair oh neosporin this is not good for cuts is associated with contact dermatitis the antibiotics in this are not very good and put people at risk for bacterial resistance which is a problem this is no better than just plain petrolatum ointment alone unnecessarily putting antibiotics on your skin just increases the risk for bacterial resistance We've got minoxidil foam did you guys check out my video on using minoxidil for the beard and brow area? Okay, I'm pretty sure this amlactin has gone up in price because of inflation, but this is a great product for like dry skin, rough and bumpy skin. I would love to see a double blind comparator trial between this and that Alpha Ret product. I bet you get the same results. Honest shampoo, shampoo and body wash. Mm -hmm. On one for efficient baby hygiene. Are these scented Q-tips? No, they just kind of, kind of look like they would be vanilla scented. Ew, this looks good. Ten dollars and seventy-nine cents for these olive melange in this cute little jug. It's olive stuffed with pimento, garlic. What was the other thing? Jalapeno and almonds. Oh, that sounds good. Ten dollars and seventy-nine cents. I've got a big thing of olives at home though. This is new too, the coconut aminos. I use this in cooking, but I have a big thing of it at home. Otherwise I would get it, how much is it? 10.99. I get it on iHerb. Actually, I, I have the soy, the um, Bragg's aminos. I don't have the coconut one. I have the Bragg's aminos. It's good, it's like an alternative to soy sauce. Japanese barbecue sauce. What is in this? Koji seed salt, that sounds good. Hmm, have you guys tried this? But it'd be good on like broccoli. It looks thinner than American brown barbecue. American barbecue sauce, there are multiple different types. There's like the mustard based one, which I personally prefer. I'm over here by the books and highly recommend this one. Educated, love it. That's a great book. This looks good. The Vanishing Half. Well, I mean, the cover looks good. I have no idea what it's about. Twins inseparable as children ultimately choose to live in two very different worlds. Oh, that looks pretty good. I might like to read that. Ew, looks like Stephanie Meyer came out with a new saga. Wow. I don't know. Oh, I didn't, I never really got into Twilight. I read the books, but they were so-so. And then the movie kind of got on my nerves. The Saints of Swallow Hill. Comment below on if you've read that. Costco has a huge selection of Kristen Hanna books. One of my favorite authors. Her books are really good. This has to be one of my favorites. You're great alone. I've made some observations on TikTok that I find a touch concerning. I mean, granted, there are plenty of things on TikTok that are very concerning. But I've noticed the ads that I'm getting on TikTok I don't consume it much TikTok, so I don't know what the algorithm does with with me because I, I really just don't consume it other than to go on there and create content or maybe kind of scan around to see like sounds and things that people are interested in that will you know hopefully help my little TikTok get seen by somebody. Anyways, I've noticed I'm getting a ton of ads every time I go on there for one of two things, either ADHD medications or plastic surgery and there's nothing wrong with either of those things but I do know that the demographic over there is much much younger and so I think it's odd that 
the so the plastic surgery thing I think is a touch unsettling like why are young children being so heavily marketed towards for plastic surgery I do know you know obviously there are adults on there and everything but like I, it just seems unsettling to me plus with all of the filters and everything and I know you know social media can make people feel almost as though they have to get plastic surgery to fit in especially you know young people are vulnerable to that kind of thinking so I don't care for that I think it's icky you know to have all of these unrealistic like beauty and body standards being pushed at these young children in very in a very quick fashion and then also also be promoting ads for plastic different types of plastic surgery and um you know procedures and stuff anyway so there, there's that and then the thing about the adhd medications that i find a touch odd unsettling whatever you, however you want to view it is that tiktok is really pushing shorter and shorter content because gen z has the average attention span of like six seconds so the algorithm heavily favors those very very short short videos of seven to six seconds and it's like they're really cultivating a very limited attention span within the app and then aggressively marketing a drug for people with problems with attention i just find it yeah i think it's odd to be marketing drugs to kids too like medicaid even though it's a prescription medication there's nothing wrong with with those i just think like we all know the power of advertising and to be advertising pharmaceuticals to that young of a group a specific pharmaceutical for you know roughly that age group i think is yeah all right i just got a little eye herb order and i thought i would share with you guys i got some more of my kelp noodles i got some questions last time i mentioned these is this is a brand of them that i get i get them on iron with sea tangle but the way i prepare them is i just rinse them and then i soak them in a little bit of baking soda and lemon juice and it softens them into noodles and you can put sauces on them they're really good so i got the kona berry ones which have kona berry added and the plain ones. I've had both and honestly, they taste the same to me. <laughs> I decided to get this. It's blueberry juice powder. Now I love blueberries. I buy the frozen ones from Costco. I thought it would be good to throw into smoothies, especially if I am out of berries, just to give it a try. Y'all know I'm also into dulse. I like to nibble on this. It's a good source of iron and it also has vitamin C. It doesn't taste like nori or anything. It's definitely got a different taste profile. It's almost like a sweet salty. I love it. So I got another bag of that. And then I've been enjoying these Primal Kitchen sauces. The steak sauce is really good. Back in my omnivore days, if I ever ate steak, which was rare, I was all about the steak sauce. Like that was the selling point for me. I love steak sauce. This is really good. Um, it's much better than A1. I mean, it tastes like A1, but it's better. It's like elevated. And the ingredients are pretty basic. So I rather enjoy that. And then I've had their barbecue sauces before too, and they're really good. I love um, golden barbecue sauce. So I got that. Speaking of barbecue sauce, I eat textured soy protein or I cook with it a lot. It's just a alternative to like ground beef. All you have to do is soak it in a little bit of broth and then you can just add it to things just as you would cooked ground meat. And so I actually like to take this entire bag, there's like eight servings, this entire bag, reconstitute it as instructed, and then heat it up with barbecue sauce. And it's great. <laughs> or the steak sauce. It tastes really good on like baked potatoes and stuff. And it's a really good source of protein too. One serving has 14 grams of protein. So I got that. Now that's soy protein, but I recently discovered that they also have a similar thing, only pea protein by this brand Plant Boss. I actually saw this at Sprouts recently and wanted to try it out. And then I saw iHerb had it. So I decided to give it a try. It's got a similar protein pack, 15 grams per serving, but it does not, it's soy free. I, I have no problem consuming soy, but I know some people are allergic. So I decided to give this a try. So I got the all purpose, and then the unseasoned. The all-purpose, I think, has like black pepper and onion powder and stuff, but the unseasoned is to be left 
up to your own devices. All right, I make a lot of smoothies and I love protein powder. If you are contemplating going more plant-based, you do not need protein powder. I repeat, you do not need protein powder. However, I've been an avid fan of protein powders long before I was ever plant-based. I love having them in smoothies and the Sun Warrior flavors are really good especially the salted caramel, which I have here. And then they have one that is a snickerdoodle that's also pretty good. And the chocolate in this lean meal branding is really good. The reason I think I like this so much is not only is it pea protein, but it has a lot of other stuff in it, which I think just balances out the consistency. I find that plant-based proteins that are just like straight pea protein plus some flavorings, they can be really chalky. But if you get a protein powder that's got like maybe some other types of protein sources like pumpkin seed protein, chia seed protein, I find that it's a lot smoother in consistency. And I've been really happy with the Sun Warrior brand. So yeah, that's my little mini eye herb haul that I would share with you guys. So I just steamed up some asparagus for the week. I'm gonna let it cool here and it should be good to go. Does anybody else like over steam asparagus? It's like the slightest little bit extra. And yes, you can definitely blanch them in ice water to stop the steam process. But this particular type of asparagus is so slender that I fear it'll just... Last weekend, I showed you guys those meal prep containers, the smaller ones that I got on Amazon. I also got these bigger ones that dual is like a casserole container. So, as soon as that cools, then I'll have that in the refrigerator. This is my Always pan, by the way. I use it to steam veggies. I like it. Yeah, I've had it for a couple of years. There is no list. And by that, I mean there is no magic list of skincare ingredients or products that will or will not cause irritation, breakouts, any kind of skin problem. I mean, Sure, there are ingredients that are more commonly associated with skin problems like fragrance, more commonly associated with irritation as well as allergies. Some fragrance compounds can dilate the little blood vessels that may worsen rosacea or hyperpigmentation, melasma. But what I'm getting at is I get comments all the time, comments, questions, can you recommend a moisturizer that won't break me out? Can you recommend a sunscreen that won't break me out? No one can do that for you. There's not a list of ingredients or a list of products that will or will not, with a 100% guarantee, cause or not cause issue for anyone. Some corners of the internet would have you believe that they have a list of the ingredients that you know either can clog pores or should be avoided, you know, going so far as to label certain ingredients as clean versus not clean or nasty versus, you know what I'm saying. All that boils down to a marketing tool to sell you certain things. And in reality, there is no such, I mean, skincare products, they are safe. There's no danger to using skincare products unless you have an allergy to them and that can cause a skin problem. Skincare products, they are safe. They're not you know, containing hazardous compounds or anything like that. Um, so at, at the end of the day, there is no magic list. It's gonna predict if a product will or will not cause problems for you. Oh man, I just had a great shower. Check it out, you guys. Speaking of products that do or do not cause problems, I have, spring is almost upon us, so you know what that means. Pretty soon I will have an empties video for you. And I anticipate that CeraVe will make it in there. This is my CeraVe moisturizer. I use this on my face and my body more so on my body these days because I'm always like trying out different products for you guys in terms of like moisturizers. So I change it up as far as what I'm using on my face a lot in terms of moisturizers. But this bad boy is a favorite of mine. It has been for many years. But a lot of people find this product burns and stings and they'll want to know what ingredient is it in this product. It's not an ingredient. It's likely the formulation overall combined with your skin is just sensitive to this. Maybe it's the pH of this product is too 
acidic, it burns, it stings. You know, if you have an underlying skin barrier problem, maybe, uh, you know, that's what is leading to the symptoms of burning and stinging. But then, you know, somebody else with eczema, which is a skin barrier problem, can use this and have no issue with it. So at the end of the day, you gotta find the products that work for your skin. Don't give products that much credit. They can only do so much. And a lot of times there are other things going on that are causative or contributory to worsening or improvement of a, any given skin condition. Things like environment, medications, stress, genetics, hormones. I digress. Anyways, y'all, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. I hope you enjoyed it and that you're having a fantastic weekend. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.